do you feel safe around the NYPD? I feel safe around all these queer people being open. These are my family. This is my family. And so, yeah. But not around the NYPD? Do you guys feel safe around the NYPD? No. No. <laughs> not at all. No. all right. Do you guys feel safe when around NYPD? No. <laughs> Do you, as a lesbian, feel safe around the NYPD? No. Honestly, no. Honestly, I don't feel I don't feel safe around police officers. Hey, everybody! I am your host, Alad, and today I'm reporting to you from the Queer Liberation March here in Midtown Manhattan. Let's go talk to some protesters, see what's going on. I know one of the efforts here was to put black people and black women specifically at the center of the march. Yeah. I saw a lot of women, people with signs that talked about black people specifically. Can you tell me how much it means to have black people centered in the movement? So I think like African American and Black Lives Matter and the LGBTQ movement really came together at the beginning of time in New York City with the first Pride March and everything. And so I think we really help take off this as black and like, no queer gap, people. We're really the center for everything great. So everybody who does it does it after us. So but it's only right. The queer movement really was we. built off the back of black queers. And so I think yep. it's very important and actually, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Crucial. Crucial. The That's first, what I'm looking for. Crucial pride. that we're part of this movement and stay relevant part of this movement. The first Pride March was by black trans women yep. and it wouldn't be shit without black trans exactly. women. Exactly. One of the issues and the controversy surrounding this march has been no, cro no cops at Pride. What do you guys make of that? Oh, Why do they need to be here? For what? We can Some have people say public them. safety. I mean, COVID is public safety. safety. They've never been here for our safety, so. As far as black women, black queer people, they're not, we can they're never on our side or for us, so. Do you guys feel safe when around NYPD? No. <laughs> no. no. I don't feel safe no. around any policemen. Yeah. 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 Officers. No. Yeah. I had one last topic I wanted to ask you guys about. We had the mayoral race recently in NYC, and Eric Adams, a black man who was a former NYPD officer, looks like he's going to be the winner, coming off a lot of black support, really. What do you make of a former NYPD officer being elected mayor here in New York City now? I decline to comment. Well, I, I don't get into We're politics. from Boston, so I can't really speak on the <laughs> yeah. politics of New York City, to yeah. be honest. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of, like, the outer boroughs, black and brown communities supporting Eric Adams. Does that mean anything to you guys? Not necessarily. We don't live here. It has a lot to do with what his policies are yeah. at the same time, so I yeah. we don't know. What are some of the big issues facing the LGBTQIA community that people should be aware of? Well, in just the past few months, there's been over 30 legislation laws attacking our trans community. Um, I think we need to remember to protect trans women, black trans women, trans women of color, trans people, um, because the fight is not over. Yeah. I know what you're, the specific thing you're talking about, in 30 states they're introducing anti-trans legislation to not let trans people play in sports. Can you tell me a little bit more about that issue and why do you think so many different states are bringing up those bills? Honestly, what's in between someone's legs is none of their business, you know? If someone wants to play the sport in the gender that they feel comfortable playing with, let them. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I know also in 20 other states, they're bringing legislation to stop people who are under 18 from taking trans reaffirming hormones. What do you think of that, um, you know, blocking health care for trans people to get access to hormones? That's specifically? just another issue that we have to keep fighting for, you know, because some people, you just know if you're like, you're trans, you just know. And the earlier they can get access to that kind of health care helps in the long run a lot. Is, is there any issue with how young somebody should be able to take hormones? I think that would be every person at their own personal preference, the parents maybe. But I think just listening to the, your kid and if they tell you, um, definitely working with them and listening to them. I had one last question for you. One of the controversies this year... One of the controversies this year at Pride was no cops at Pride. Um, what do you make of people saying they don't want any cops at Pride? We'll have the cops shown up for the queer community. Do you feel safe around the NYPD? I feel safe around all these queer people being open. These are my family. This is my family. And so, yeah. But not around the NYPD?
Um, thank you so much for your time. Is there anything else you want to mention? That's it. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. And I love the good designs. I see you guys do have signs trying to center black lives and black women and black trans people specifically. Can you tell me a little bit more about the importance of black people specifically in the movement? Um, yeah, a wonderful lady came up and gave these to us and I really appreciate that because I think it is an important thing to address intersectionality in like a community like where we all share like so much in common but we also have so much to learn from each other. Could you, could one of you explain to me why it's important to center black people in the center of um, the movement? The more their voices are heard, the more um, progress we make towards, you know, a better community. <laughs> um, I had one last question for you guys, I promise. I know there was a little bit of controversy with this march because they wanted no cops at yeah, Pride. Cops out of Pride. Can I ask you guys what you think of that? I just honestly, since it involves the Black Lives Matter movement, that cops really shouldn't be all that present. Obviously, with regards to traffic and stuff, I think they need to be there for that. But yeah. other than traffic, that, that's it, about it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. only when it's a safety issue, not really and cops are here. It kind of their presence insinuates that we are still being like guided or like controlled in a way, instead of just roaming freely. And I don't, yeah, other than traffic, they really shouldn't be here, because... Do you guys feel safe around the NYPD? No. No. <laughs> Not at all. No. All right. Thank you, ladies, <laughs> so much for your time. Oh, was there anything any of you guys wanted to mention? No, no but happy Pride. Thank you guys so much. Thank you guys so much. You have a sign that says, gay cops are traitors. Correct. Can you tell me a little bit more about why you're at this march and a little bit more about the sign? Yes. I'm at this march because I'm standing in solidarity with all working class people, particularly our trans women of color, who continue to be brutalized and oppressed by the New York Police Department. This sign represents my understanding of our history. They try to take queer history out of the history books, but I know what the police have been doing and will continue to do to the queer communities. If you look at just, not just Stonewall, it was a riot against cops, even before that, there were decades of municipal codes where various towns and cities would actually have on the books requiring people to wear gender normative clothing. And if you weren't, the police could beat you and throw you into jail. I know my history and that's why I'm here. This is coming off, this is very much so like ACAB, all cops are bastards Correct. type message. Correct. Can you tell me more about across the board how cops are bad or, or whatnot? Can you repeat that question? I wanted to ask more. So is it across the board where, where cops, all, all cops are bad? Is there a way to be a good officer? No. So we have to distinguish the difference between an individual person who is a cop and the cops or policing as an institution. If there's a cop who's a nice person when he takes off his badge, frankly, I don't care. But as soon as he puts on that badge, he's a representative of a white supremacist capitalist heteronormative state. The purpose of this statement, all cops are bastards, reflects the fact that cops have bastardized our system of keeping our communities safe. We know that the reason most crime happens is because of poverty. People steal because they don't have access to the basic needs like housing and health care, food and water. And understandably, people may commit uh, petty crimes like stealing or jumping a turnstile. I've jumped a turnstile when I was too poor for 275 even to get to work and a full-time job. And what happened? A cop stopped me. The purpose of his job was not to make sure I had access to public transit and could get to work. The purpose of his job was to criminalize my poverty. I had one last question I wanted to ask you, and it'll be about the mayor's race, because Eric Adams was a former NYPD officer. So Eric Adams was a former NYPD officer, is also a black man. He got a ton of support. Uh -huh. Part of what he did in the past was try to bring in more black people to be NYPD officers. What do you think that says about the direction of our city if we just elected a former NYPD cop and also a black male to be mayor? I think that reflects how police propaganda has been very effective. The fact that people think that the police were actually defunded when they were not, when people think that levels of crime are rising astronomically, when actually it's been the safest since the 1980s. This propaganda has continued to make people feel scared and understand when voters feel scared, they may look to a big man or some strong man archetype. Not just like Eric Adams, but also saw with Donald Trump. Yeah. So I sympathize with people's under, uh, feeling of in, uh, safety, but it's actually a historical. Black and brown people are bearing the brunt of bad policing. Why do you think they're coming out in so much numbers to support Eric Adams? I don't know that they actually are. I, I think mean, uh, when you look at who actually votes in the Democratic primary, it's a minority of people. It's like less than 15 percent. He got most support of the outer boroughs compared to any other candidate in this race. He got the most black and brown support. What do you 
how, how, so how do we square that black and brown people are supporting somebody who wants to be tougher on crime? Because I think he's weaponized fear very effectively. Absolutely. Thank you for your time. Was there something else you want to mention? I'm good, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You have a shirt that says, no turfs, no swerves. Can you tell me what that means? Well, turf is like, it means trans exclusive, radically feminist. It's basically people who use like feminist language like against, like, against trans people. Swerf is the same thing, but with sex workers. Oh, okay, interesting. Can you tell me a little bit more about what it means for you to be at the Queer Liberation March? Uh, it means that to have a, to express queer identity independent of corporate control, of, of, corp of, 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 ca of, of capitalism, of, of just the uh, cis hetero patriarchy. Could you tell me what the biggest issue the LGBTQIA or you as an LGBTQIA person faces? Uh, healthcare, housing. I mean, uh, just like basically a lot of a uh, lot of trans a lot of trans people, trans uh, queer POC are like working class people. So that so issues of housing, environment, through um, like safe neighborhoods, clean neighborhoods. Yeah. I know in 30 states they passed anti-trans bills or are there anti-trans bills in state legislatures about not having um, trans people in um, sports, in right. sports in like high school like that. Why do you think we're seeing so many of those bills in different state legislators throughout our country? Well, partially that's a coordinated effort. I mean, there's like, they're like, they're like right-wing organizations that sort of like write these, um, write these um, bills for like, for, to, re to be introduced in state legislatures. Yeah. Do you think there's any issue with trans people in sports? Absolutely not, no. Okay. Uh, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you. What do you think the biggest issue facing lesbians or people in your community is? I think um, intersectionality is really important, um, that we put emphasis on representing every aspect of somebody's identity and not, um, and not creating an overarching or a general picture of what a lesbian is. Okay, and what, what do you think like um, some mischaracteristics or like wrong stereotypes of lesbians that we should be aware of, if any? Um, I think I think there's such a prevalent um, sort of like over picture of, of the male gaze when it comes to lesbianism that, that lesbians are just seeking attention from men or it's a, it's a, like it's a fantasy um, and I think I, I, I really want to represent the idea that, that lesbianism, that like female sexuality is uh, entirely its own thing um, and women can want to kiss women because female sexuality does exist. I know there was a little bit of controversy yeah. surrounding the march this year. They didn't want any cops at Pride. What do you make of that? Um, I think it's it's not fair to put somebody in the march that makes others uncomfortable. If one member of the community is making other members of the community uncomfortable, we, sh we shouldn't have them there. Mm -hmm. um, and, and Pride did start as a protest. It started as a protest against uh, police because police were attacking uh, members of the LGBTQIA community. So I think um, if cops want to come out of uniform, if there are, if there are police officers who want to come um, not representing their profession, that is fine, but I think police officers who want to represent their profession at Pride, that isn't cool because Pride did start as a protest against police. Should LGBTQIA people feel safe around the NYPD? I think that's a really tricky question and I don't I don't want to speak for everybody's experience sure. on that. Do, do you, as a lesbian, feel safe around the NYPD? No. Honestly, no. Honestly, I don't feel, I don't feel safe around police officers. I think we need, um, Pretty a pretty large national um, overhaul and and uh, reformatting of the police until until general members of the community can feel safe around the NYPD. I had one last question I wanted to ask you. Um, we just had the New York City mayor's race come up, and it seems as though Eric Adams will be the mayor. Um, Eric Adams ran on like a very tough on crime platform. He's a black man. He did get a lot of minority support. I wanted to ask you, what do you think about Eric Adams being kind of nominated now in our city here by many people in the black and brown community who are being perpetrated against by the NYPD so often? I support um, uh, BIPOC people in politics. I think I think being able to break through that glass ceiling is is really impressive. But I do I do not support being tough on crime. Um, I I want. Um, I want. I would like to. I would like to pull back the police um, because I think. I think um, the police in in our general society have done more harm than good. Thank you so much for your time. Was thank there anything so else you wanted to mention? No. Thank, thank you, you guys. Hey everybody, thank you guys so much for tuning into another episode. Let me know what you thought of the video down in the comments. If this is your first time here, guys. Please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Till next time, stay barely informed.